All right, so how's it going, guys? We are back in KSP2, and this is going to be the third episode of Colonizing Duna. If you haven't seen the first two episodes, I definitely recommend going back and watching those. In the first episode, we launch a rover, which is currently on the surface of Duna. And then in the second episode, we launched a space station, which is currently orbiting Duna. So yeah, I definitely recommend going back and watching those if you haven't. But anyways, we are here in the VAB building this lander. And that's pretty much it. We're going to throw a bunch of parachutes on this thing. Because if you don't know, EVE is... It's got a good amount of gravity, so we need a lot of parachutes to land on it with such a heavy lander like this. But that, the, all those parachutes coupled with a little bit of thrust from that engine will certainly be able to land us safely on Duna. And then that big engine will also, its thrust to weight ratio is good on it, so we'll definitely be able to get back into orbit and rendezvous with the space station. After we land, we will have a little over 2,500, between 2,500 and 3,000 meters per second of delta V to get back into orbit and rendezvous with the station, which will be plenty, you know, for any corrections and, you know, adjustments we, we need to do to make that maneuver and rendezvous with the station. So we're just finishing up our build on the first two stages that will be getting us into orbit. We're going to put plenty of struts on these. I always do. There's no auto strut in KSP2, at least not a good one. So you always want to make sure you have plenty of struts. Those really help stiffen up your craft and make it not so wobbly. All right, well, yeah, that's pretty much it. We're just going to swap out these engines and then build our fairing. I don't really like fairings in KSP2. They're still very wonky. They definitely need some some work. But this one didn't go too bad, actually. I got it first try. So we're going to configure our staging there and then throw this on the launch pad and have Jeb put us in orbit. Alright, flies pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and speed things up so this video isn't so long like always. We're just gonna work on a circularization to get into orbit around Kerbin. Ditch our first stages there, solid fuel boosters. And then we can clean our orbit up around Kerbin. Alright, we'll just go ahead and make these last little micro adjustments. We'll warp up to our apoapsis so we doesn't don't disturb it too much. Alright, there we go. We'll go ahead and ditch our fairing. And we are going to hop right into our burn to exit Kerbin's sphere of influence. Alright, I'm going to start our burn and get right to it. There we go. We can go ahead and warp out of Kerbin's Sphere of Influence. Alright, we'll go ahead and plan our maneuver to Duna. Perfect. Looks good. We'll go ahead and warp to that burn and get it done. I had to go to my last stage to to complete that burn, so we'll definitely have to uh, refuel once we're in orbit around Duna, but that's okay. That was kind of planned. And we will have to refuel every time we get back into orbit around Duna anyways after landing on Duna so that's going to be pretty much the norm anyways 
Okay, so we'll just go ahead and warp to our periapsis in our Duna encounter here. And burn retrograde so we can circularize, and then we will work on our inclination so we can get our rendezvous done with the space station. After this, I decided to just go ahead and add some tanks to the fuel station, or space station. I guess that kind of makes it a fuel station, but we do that and we, I'm just gonna skip that build and everything and I just, I'm just i gonna show you the, the docking of them, but we skipped the, the trek to Duna and the build and everything on them. Pretty boring stuff, you know. But back to the task at hand, we will go ahead and warp around to the periapsis and fix our inclination a little bit here. These last little micro adjustments to get a little better. It's not bad, but we can go a little better. Then I will turn my apoapsis into my periapsis so that our relative speed with the space station when we do get our encounter isn't too crazy. We will warp around to our periapsis and bring our apoapsis in a little bit. I was kind of distracted while I was doing this um, rendezvous. So I didn't really get the best. I didn't really do it that, that good. But anyways, we'll just go ahead and warp around until we get a better approach here. We'll warp around to our periapsis and then do our fine tuning to get our encounter there pretty close. Or intersection there, I should say. All right, then we can kill off our relative speed and burn towards the target. Go ahead and warp towards it. Once again, we'll burn off all our relative speed. Burn retrograde in relation to the target. And then burn towards the target and once again, burn off all our speed. That's all a rendezvous is essentially, is just, you know, burning towards the target, killing off your speed, burning towards the target, and then you will eventually match its orbit and you'll be stuck in this state where you're pretty much just floating right next to it. All right, so we'll go ahead and get these two vessels configured so we can get our docking completed. And in KSP2, it, it never seems like they line up like exactly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and manually line this up the rest of the way and then switch back to our lander. Perfect, there we go. That was a perfect dock. You can't really get any better than that. All right, so after this, like I said, I'm just gonna go ahead and launch these fuel tanks and get them hooked up. I don't know, I might swap these out in the future, but for now they'll work. I didn't put any um, docking ports on them from behind just because, you know, the more decouplers and docking ports, docking ports don't work as decouplers in KSP2. At least I haven't ever successfully been able to. It just doesn't give you the option to undock. It just doesn't work. But anyways, there we have the fuel tanks all docked up and we got the fuel transferred into the lander. We can go ahead and get this lander undocked. We had a bit a little little bit of wonkiness there. I don't know if that separator has been there this entire time, just kind of kind of hanging out. Yeah, that's some. But it got out of there without the Kraken ripping my 
space station to shreds, so we'll go ahead and just go with it. All right, so we will go ahead and do a retrograde burn to get us a landing spot in the sun. For this, we're just going to uh, do a test run. We're not going to rendezvous with the rover or anything at this point. Just kind of want to see how this, how well this works, if it's actually a viable lander, and then alternatively, essentially an Uber for the Kerbals to get to and from the surface of Duna to the space station. All right, so we'll go ahead and warp down to the landing site. We have our parachutes set up in the action group. I found after um, undocking with the station that it kind of made just staging wonky after that, so that's why we did that. All right, we came in for a pretty easy touchdown. It was a it was a little little harder than I would have liked, but. Any touchdown where you're safe and sound is good enough. All right, so we'll uh, we'll go ahead and EVA and get a flag planted as customary. Oh yeah. Then we'll go ahead and get loaded back up. Big jump here, and then we can go ahead and see how it does getting us back into orbit. Oh yeah, this thing does great. No problems here. All right, we'll go ahead and speed things up to get into orbit. It is looking like we're going to have plenty of Delta V to get into orbit and also rendezvous with our space station where we will be leaving it for the next episode. So the next episode is going to be the, the base. I'm going to be building a base and land, landing it on the surface. So until then, we will be leaving this docked at the space station so it will be ready to refuel and go on another mission all right so i'm just going to warp down to my periapsis here and then i will match my apoapsis with the orbit of the station and then from there i will adjust my orbit to get a good intersect. All right, there we go. We can warp to that point and then kill off our relative speed to the station. Okay, we'll warp up to it and then do our burn to kill off our speed. Once again, we're doing that cycle of killing off speed, burning towards target. Until we come in really close. And we can line everything up. To do our final burn to dock. Alright, so I'll go ahead and manually line up the space station. Okay, that should work. I kind of just warp a little bit to uh, kill off any movement. It seems to work the best. And here we come in for a wonky docking. Definitely wonky, but it works. So we'll, we'll go ahead and go with it. All right, so here we have our lander docked with the station where it will be staying until next episode here it is in the sunlight 
But yeah, that's all I have for today. I really appreciate you guys watching as always. And if you've enjoyed, I would really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. And be sure to tune in to the next episode. I try to get these out every Monday.